Good day collectors and viewers, Social Distance Warrior is back and today we're going to look at the Emperor's Royal Guard. So in a universe full of white stormtroopers and a dark Sith Lord and grey Imperial officers, we actually get a figure of a different color, this time in red, Sith red, blood red, and that's the Emperor's Royal Guard. So the Emperor's Royal Guard made his debut in the third original trilogy movie, Return of the Jedi, back in 1983. And soon after that, followed in the toy store, the Emperor's Royal Guard action figure, which is this guy over here. So the Emperor's Royal Guard action figure made his debut in 1983. Uh, he's on the 65 card back for the original trilogy. And you can see him in all his glory here. He's got a nice cloth robe. So we've managed to escape getting any plastic vinyl capes. And we actually get a nice cloth robe. And you can see it's standing the test of time very well. And he comes with his staff over here so staff that he's guarding the emperor with when luke and darth Vader make their uh, appearance on the second death star and they go to pay emperor palpatine a visit to try and seduce luke to the dark side so these royal guards are standing in front of the doorway of that elevator shaft as he comes through and they're also in the hangar uh, when the emperor makes his debut uh, on the second death star when he comes to visit so you can see the character has got a nice blood red outfit uh he carries his staff the robe covers his body here so you can see if i lift that up he does have his arms free his legs are free you can move his legs up and down but he's kind of restricted with how the robe sits over him uh if you turn it around here you see there is a slit in the back so that helps you with the movement on how to move him around sit him down if you were going to use him in the imperial shuttle at the time which was a great selling point for these guys uh, not much to them. They didn't really do much in the movie. They just stood there and you had to use your imagination. But uh, they're really intimidating. And look, and of course, they'd reappear in the prequel trilogy once we got to uh, Revenge of the Sith. And we saw them again protecting Palpatine. So these are the Emperor's Elite Squadron. Mine's a little bit dirty there on the back. But an intimidating force and such a great standout action figure. I used to call this one the Red Crayola Crayon back in the day as well because he's got that resemblance to the crayon with his look and his bright red outfit and his nice shiny helmet black eye visor over there so that's the figure he's got little pegs on the bottom as well so you can stand them up in your play sets but that stood the test of time that was the figure that we initially got back in 1983 um, and then we wouldn't see him again till the line relaunched in 1997 with the power of the force 2 and then he came out on the green card so that's the card over here so it came on a green foil card. I have the Canadian release because I live up in Canada. Uh, you can see the trilingual writing over here on the front, but there he is. And I was super ecstatic and excited to get a new Royal Guard. And he comes with the staff and his staff, again, is a little more screen accurate. We'll show you him loose in a second. Let's just move that around to the back so you can see what it looks like. And these initially when these figures came out, they used to come with a nice little bio description that you could cut out over here. And it gave you a little more information on their Emperor's Royal Guard and classification, it says here that they're human. Uh, the affiliation is the Galactic Empire, and then the weapon of choice is either a force pike or a heavy blaster pistol, which these ones don't come with, but we might see one come with it a little bit later on in our description over here. So you can see some other figures that you can get in the line. There's, you know, Lando, Skiff Guard, Bib Fortuna, Palpatine, Stormtrooper Luke, Bosk, and then a couple of ships there as well. Uh, the T-16 Skyhopper and the Snowspeeder from back in the day and then you can see the nice imprint date there that's back in 1997 so that was the release for that card back and the loose figure of that is just over here um no cloth goods this time around it's a nice you know standing figure there's not much you can do with it you can put the force spike you know in his hand there and his arms move up and down you can't really do much with his head it does have a tiny bit of movement you can't really do much with it if I flip them up top to bottom, you can see that there's no legs. They're just one solid body with peg holes, so you can stand them, but he doesn't have any issue standing on his own. And then, of course, the Lucasfilm logo uh, imprint underneath there, 1997, Kenner, China. And that's what he looks like if I flip him to the side, and that's what he looks like when I flip him to the back. So he's a little bit taller if I stand him next to this guy here. He's taller than the original one, presence-wise. he's the, the scale was a little bit off with the Power of the Force 2 line when it first launched. But it was nice to have these, and of course, if you had a couple of them, you can stand them 
uh, side by side. And, you know, I was more than ecstatic to be able to get some of these guys and build some dioramas with them guarding the emperor. Uh, so that was in 97. And then, of course, he'd get re-released again in 98 on the fla uh, the Force Flashback freeze frame over here. Freeze frame card backs. I have a sealed one of that as well to show you. So it's exactly the same figure, except they came with these, you know, nice gimmicky uh, freeze frame slides. And if you turn that off around to the back, uh, if you hold this up to the light, you can actually see the slide. And uh, you can get a reader that if you send in the proof of purchase and a little bit of money. And then, of course, it comes with a little bio card in the back there. It's a little bit different. And you can see them coming off the Imperial shuttle. Now it's a nice little diorama scene. If you had a shuttle, you'd want to get a number of these guys and try to reenact that scene there. And there's a few other characters from that line. And, of course, from the Star Wars Special Edition, which was the big prominent uh, promotion at the time. You see uh, the Dubak and Sand Trooper. And then uh, Han and Jabba, which were added CGI whites into those movies. So that's what we get in 97, and then that would get re-released in 98. And the next time we'd see him, we'd fast forward five years to 2002 and part of the Star Wars saga line. So they combined everything after uh, The Phantom Menace. So when Attack of the Clones came out, everything was under one unified card. And it made it a little bit complicated. I would have preferred there to be, you know, exclusive uh, card back for the release of Attack of the Clones, but we didn't get that. Uh, but we did get a brand new Royal Guard on an Attack of the Clones a card back for the Star Wars saga. And that'll be this guy over here. And bring him forward. And you can see, so he's been updated from the previous one. And if you notice, right when I stand, put them side by side here, that he's a lot smaller in scale. This is a little bit too big because they weren't really focused on the scale when they first launched him. So he's more to scale. He does have some more articulation here. He does have swivel, you know, on his elbows there. So he can move his arms around, but he can't really do anything. He's kind of restricted by the cape as well. So he's either going to hold his um, pike on the left side or on the right side. You have that choice. And I have mine, of course, on the on the right side over here. And then this layer of cape opens up. Again, it's plastic. It opens up to reveal his arms there. Uh, you can see his helmet. Uh, it sits over the top of the cape, but it's not really a different red. It's a slightly different red, but it doesn't really stand out as much as that guy does or the original one does. Um it's nice that they took the pike and then they colored it. They colored the handle black, so there's a little more coloring on there, more detail. Uh, if we look underneath here, we can see he does have feet this time, which is nice. And then that robe underneath separates as well, just to show you. And you can see that he's got separate legs underneath there, but there's no detail or anything. He's just, you know, solid legs underneath there. And they are articulated, but there's not much you can do. That cape really stops him from sitting down. He's just going to stand and look attentive. To protecting the emperor so that's what he looks like from the side and of course if we turn him around to the back that's what we got so a nice detailing on that cape folds on the bottom uh a nice update he's more to scale size wise but again you know it leaves a little bit to be desired i would have always wanted this thing to be a fabric material just so i can do more with the character but you know we'll take a brand new royal guard whenever we can get him so that was in 2002. so we go three years ahead to the next movie in the prequel told you this one's the last one revenge of the sith and we get another brand new royal guard this time on the revenge of the sith card back uh this one was an interesting one because he came out first as the senate guard in the blue outfit slightly different helmet and there's that senate guard that was in attack of the clones and then of course we'd get him in his red colored i don't remember seeing him in the movie so don't quote me if i'm wrong but he was supposed to be in a scene and then that never happened probably towards the end of the movie when uh, they started to manufacturing those clones to take over the galaxy. So he does come with the blaster, the rifle, blaster rifle, like the Coruscant Guard does. And instead of the blue, he's got his red outfit on here. And he's a big time upgrade over the previous one that we have. Let's just take that gun off just to kind of show you a little more detail wise. You can see the head sculpting is better. That visor is nice and black and the helmet's nice and red. And of course, if you look at the arms here, there's a little more articulation. There's a swivel there at the shoulders, so you can move those arms up. And then at the elbows over here, they swivel, so we don't have, uh, you know, articulated elbows that we would want, but they swivel, so that's nice. You can straighten that out, you can do more with the character. And finally, we get cloth robes on these guys, and it's almost identical material-wise, feel-wise, to that original one. 
which is nice. And it's a, it's a brighter red. So if I take the original one, put them side by side, you can see this one's more uh, burgundy looking compared to that new one. And it's got something to do a little bit, I'm sure, with wear and tear over time. But still, the fabric is a lot redder, more blood red on this Revenge of the Sith version. And if we turn around to the back, you can see it's got that slit on the on the robe, on the cape, so it separates the front to back. So you can pose them a lot more. There's definitely more reason to have... This became like the first army builder for the Royal Guards. Because of that reason, if I lift that robe up, you can see that they actually... You know, they sculpted the entire underneath of this guy, which is amazing. Like, this is back in 2005, and... They went all out on the sculpting because in the expanded universe, you see I'm missing the pistol over here, but he finally comes with that blaster pistol that we talked about on the card back bio. So force pike or blaster pistol is preferred weapon. But they've articulated that so you can move his legs up. You can bend them at the knees there. Uh, you can swivel that side by side, side to side. And if you wanted to, of course, you could take this cape off and you could customize and turn this guy into one of the Connor Jacks. Uh, figures from the Dark Horse comics and I can show you what he looks like in the back as well. So there's a slit there in the back to see more detail on him and you can kind of see that there's almost like some sort of uh, armor or jetpack on the back of the armor over here and of course you can see his belt underneath there and his boots and fully detailed and they didn't have to do all of that on there but they did. They went all out. Obviously somebody was passionate working on these characters and you know, we as fans, we definitely appreciate extra added stuff that gets put on like that. And there's a few characters that have this sort of thing. And the Royal Guard was that guy in 2005. So let's put him back there. Nice blood red, blood red cape. So we wouldn't see another one for another, a brand new one for another seven years. And then, of course, with the vintage collection, uh, before it disappeared the first time around, we got a brand new emperor's royal guard and we got him released on the actual vintage card it's such a beautiful card back that you have to have one of these on card it's such a nice card back so we bring that forward you can see him in his bright red armor there emperor's royal guard and there he is inside there he comes with extra accessories he has his pike he has his blaster and if you look in the back there he has what appears to be a shoulder pauldron and if i look b behind there as well you can see there's another staff or a pike and you can't kind of see it in the in the picture over here, but there is a separate helmet there in the back as well where you can turn him into a brand new separate character. So the loose version of the Vintage Collection Royal Guard is right over here. Let's bring him forward. And you can see he's got a nice new robe. Um, it's cloth goods again. It's smoother than the previous material that we had on the Vintage one, original one, and on the one from Revenge of the Sith. But it flows really nicely. It's a thinner material. It's, it's cut on both sides here, so you can put his arms out. You know, if you want to hold the pike in this hand or in this hand, you can do so if you have him standing on alternate sides of Emperor Palpatine. Uh, he does have articulation. If we lift that robe up over here, you can see underneath, he's got a holster with his pistol, just like the previous one did. He doesn't have as much paint applications underneath here. They stuck with the red, but he does have articulation there at the waist on his legs. Up and down, he does have, you know, articulation at the knees and, of course, at the ankle there as well. So you have movement, more movement on there, vintage collection style. That's on both sides. You can see that there's a separate robe piece underneath here. Uh, the arms as well. Let's move this one up over here just to show you. Uh, so the arms have, you know, articulation on the shoulder. You have ball, ball joints up there. You have it again on the elbow over here so you can bend his elbows. Let's do that there. And, of course, you can move his wrists. So you have that on both sides there, and you can see that the helmet does move back and forth because it's removable. We're going to look at that in a second. Let's just turn this guy around to show you what he looks like from the back. That's what he looks like from the back and from the side, and you can see a fully articulated Emperor's Royal Guard. Now, he served more than one purpose. So not only is he an army builder just to have like this in your scenes for Return of the Jedi protecting Emperor Palpatine or coming out of the Imperial Shuttle, Tidarium, but you can also take apart his armor and he comes with a separate helmet shoulder piece and you can build this guy I have a separate one over here and have him in royal guard training form so this is the version of him when he's training to be a emperor's royal guard and he comes with a separate staff that's in the packaging as well in the back uh there's his gun in there we didn't pull the gun out to show you on the royal guard so let's do that on this one here 
See if we can get it out of the holster just to show you. And it's basically exactly the same pistol that comes with your Scout Trooper. That's the same pistol that they have in there. There's the holster. It's a large holster to hold that. And he just goes back in there. Uh, he does have a helmet. He does have this shoulder piece that goes on. You take the Royal Guard's helmet off to put the shoulder piece on. So he's in training, you know, in protective format. It's like an American Gladiator. Uh, he does have that, you know, skirt piece sitting on there. You can see the Imperial insignia on the back here, which is neat, and on the shoulder, which is awesome. So some detail on there. And, of course, the helmet's removable. And you can see a character design underneath there. So they went with a generic look. But, again, you can reference the Dark Horse comics if you wanted that to be one of the characters. Or, if you like the Breaking Bad, then there you have a younger Brian Cranston as well. So you have some more options on there. Of course, you can army build these guys. You can take these heads off because they're on ball joints, right? So you can pull that head off, pop it off, stick another head on. It's an amazing figure. Uh, it's yet to be outdone, but that is the ultimate version of the Royal Guard in training form and in his regular Royal Guard form. So let's put him back up there so he can stand side by side. You can see both versions. See if I can get him to stand. There we go. So we get another version of him. Um, Disney took over. They purchased Lucasfilm from George Lucas. Of course, he sold it and retired. Uh, and just after they did that, before they released any new versions of the Royal Guard, we had the Black Series come out. So the Black Series initially came out in six inch form and also in three three quarter inch form. And we got the Royal Guard re released and. That was my first exposure to it. I, didn't, I passed on the one that came with the Vintage Collection because I figured I'll see him in stores and I never did. And then my next shot getting him was when he became a Black Series figure and Walmart exclusive. And, you know, the card these card backs aren't the nicest, but I have one to show you here. So it's identical to like the six inch versions, but in miniature form. And that's what we get. And they were exclusive to Walmart and they had a number of figures. He was one of them. And they ran that for a few years and then they... We reintroduced the vintage collection and we got the figures back on that style. But you can see here, it's exactly the same figure as the one on vintage collection form. He's got all of his weapons in there. And it was a cheaper option, of course, to get him on this one because the other one was pricier. It was a little more rare. And you could build an army of these. And that's how I got the rest of my Royal Guards, is finding these guys in Walmart. And, you know, there's not much to be desired on these card backs. The back is all, you know, just... In many different languages, there's no other pictures other than a little profile pic of the Royal Guard there. And then, of course, his name there on the side. So that's what we got in 2016, re-release of the Vintage Collection one. And then we get The Last Jedi coming out in 2017. And even though he wasn't in the movie, they made some original trilogy stuff as well. And they were five points of articulation figures. This was a three-pack that came out at Target in the States in a in Canadian Tire of all places over here in Canada. No other store got them but Canadian Tire. And that's this version over here. That's the most recent one that we got, brand new sculpt. It's actually a really nice figure. Every single figure in that three pack was an amazing sculpt, although they were limited in articulation. You know, the display value of these guys, the Luke, the Emperor, and of course the Royal Guard are amazing. And you can see he's got his cloth cut there he doesn't have any standard five points of articulation underneath but you can see they they made him with those knee pads and you know shin pads so he is the character that can be displayed further but he's kind of limited to this pose here uh you can see how nice his cape flows all the way around so even though it's plastic it sits really nice you know with the slits on the side compared to you know the power of the force 2 one right night and day it's a very very nice rendition of the royal guard figure and Again, I only found them that one time that it was there. It was a pricey figure to get. But had I found these, you know, at store at a discounted price, I would have picked up more because they're just such a nice alternative, you know, to have in your display if you don't want the cloth goods. And you can see what he looks like against, you know, the Saga version. He's much better than that one as well. Now, I'm going to take out his pike here just to show you. So the detail on this, they went a little bit further. It's nicer looking. It's sturdier than the one that came in the vintage collection, even though they didn't paint the handle. But it's a nicer weapon. It's a better representation. It's a nice solid plastic. It doesn't sway or bend. And the figure here, don't quote me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure his head's on a ball joint and we can pull him off to show you what it looks like underneath. Yeah, sure enough, here we go. So there's a separate figure underneath. Five points of articulation, you know, fully sculpted. Let's just put the armor down for a second just to show you what it looks like. 
And you can see they fully sculpted them here and you can do more with this as well. If you wanted to put another head on there, I haven't tried putting any alternative heads, but it's nice that it comes apart there and you can take that piece off. So uh, you can see the ball joint in the bottom there, it just slips right over and it gives you your royal guard. So very, very simple design. And, you know, um, for five points of articulation, you can't go wrong with this guy. And I don't think there's a more accurate look to him. Like, look at him from the side than this one here. He looks movie accurate. The way he's standing, the way he's slouched over slightly with the helmet. He's tall. You know, he's menacing looking. He looks like he's ready to protect Emperor Palpatine. You know, at all costs. Let's put that staff back in his hand. And he holds that staff really well as well. The way his hand's posed. His fingers are kind of positioned to hold the staff if I can ever get it in. Let's see. There we go. You can see how they're positioned to hold it. The thumb comes right over the front and that index finger comes straight down and the other two fingers come around and hold it in place. So that's 2017 on the last Jedi card back. Let's see if I can get him to stand. Here we go. And then the next time we'd see him is going to again be a re-release of the Vintage Collection one. It'll be in 2021. And it's the one that I showed you already over here. That's that guy. So he got re-released in 2021 on the card back. And came comes with all of the accessories. It's identical to the figure that we had before. But it's such a nice card back. If you never had a chance to pick one up, now's your chance. Because they're still available. So if I turn around to the back, you can see he's VC number 105. And there's some more figures that came out as well. And there's some re-releases there of Luke Hoth, uh, Admiral Akbar, you know, uh, Han Solo in Endor, and a brand new Boba Fett, of course, on top over here, and then the Royal Guard down here on the bottom. So, vintage collection options, if you like to keep them on card back. If not, you have the option to get that really nice, outstanding Royal Guard. And I want to give some, you know, Black Series love as well, because he did come out in the Black Series a few years back, and that's the Royal Guard right over here. It is cloth goods. Uh, the cape over here sits a lot better than the vintage collection one. He's got, you know, the slit on the side here. And you can see he's got his hands positioned to hold his pike. And if we lift up the robe, you can see he's fully, you know, detailed underneath. Shin pads, knee pads, full armor, glossy boot legs, and then, you know, some more armor over here on the chest and around the waist. And you can see that he's got his gun there in the holster as well. And all the way around the back, armor is painted. So, again, you have... More options with this figures here, with this figure here in six inch form. He's fully articulated. He's got, you know, ball joint at the shoulder and then articulation at the elbow as well and at the wrist, right? We'll expect what you expect from the Black Series. So you have that outstanding figure. And if you pick up two of them, they can protect your Emperor Palpatine that came on that throne as well. And that's what he looks like close up, detail wise, with his pike. And let's turn him around to the side. And then over to the back so you can see the details. So that's what we got for the Emperor's Royal Guard from 1983 all the way up to present. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. And I look forward to making more videos. I'm really enjoying this. And it's a nice way to uh, reflect on the collection and talk about these figures and their direction that they've changed over the years. And, you know, Star Wars being as popular as it is and... You know, it's going to last forever if we keep going this way. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Bye.